Hello and happy summer, everybody. Welcome to the E3 2016 special with our guest Jessica, also known as Butterfly Samurai. This was the E3 free for all. We jumped around from the press conferences from EA to Sony, Microsoft, Ubisoft, everything in between. Bethesda, the game for highly anticipating uh, stuff coming out later this year, 2016, 2017 releases. Uh, it's just a lot that we really enjoyed um, from, e from E3 this year. Uh, Jessica even gave um, her perspective on actually attending E3 a few years ago. Along with that, there are even more surprises in store. So please let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and we'll see you next time. Later. <laughs> first press conference was on Sunday, June 12th. That was EA's press conference, and some of their big games were Titanfall 2, Mass Effect and Drama, Madden 2017, FIFA 17, and we'll go through the rest. But what were some of your highlights from EA's press conference that you liked or didn't like? Okay. So, first of all, they've announced this new initiative that they're doing called EA Originals, where they're going to be giving more support to smaller studios and independent developers. And I really love indies and small studios because they just have much more freedom than triple A studios to give us creative content. So uh, EA showed this new game called Fee and it looks super cute, kind of dark, like limbo dark, but cute. Um, mm -hmm. And, and it looks really good. It's by an independent developer, and it's going to be the first thing that they publish. And it's, it's basically just like a small animal being guided through like a dangerous forest type of thing. So very simple, but, you know, much more creative than something that could have came out of a AAA studio uh, where they're basing everything on numbers and, and money and things like that. So I'm intrigued by it. It looks really cute. Hmm. Is, yeah, Fee kind of reminded me Wait, 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 actually, never mind. Was that just was there a studio last year that did like the, the yarn game? Yeah, Unraveled. Um, okay. I think it's not. I wonder if it's by the same people. I think that it's just kind of going that same route mm. with that same kind of like no dialogue type of games, kind of like Journey did a few years ago. Yeah, Fee, Fee looks in intriguing. And um, what are some things that you that you could see coming out of like the creative? Um, software that EA is doing the part the partnership well I really hope that a lot of um, a lot more indie developers start to put their things out there um, I know that they have like IndieCade to be able to showcase their stuff but it's interesting that EA you know a major company is taking on these indies and small developers because now they're going to have like E3 and PAX to be able to kind of show off their games a lot more than just having like smaller sections of those conventions, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. There were, were there any, any more highlights from EA that you enjoyed? Um, well, I liked what I saw of Titanfall 2. I'm not a big fan of Titanfall just because I don't play on Xbox, mm -hmm. but this one's gonna have a single player campaign, so that interests me a lot more than just having a multiplayer kind of experience. Um, I like the Mass Effect Andromeda trailer, but I'm afraid that they didn't so much about it that, you know, everyone was waiting for that, but we only got a very small, like, minute-long trailer, and then they were done talking about it. I thought that was kind of a missed opportunity for EA. Uh, we didn't even really get, like, a specific release date. We just got that it was coming out, you know, quarter one of 2017, which, in my opinion, means that it's probably going to be delayed a few months. So I guess yes. we'll, we'll still see. Because mm -hmm. quarter one like, is that is that what January through like April or March? I mean, I mean yeah, May, May or so. Yeah. Okay. okay. Which makes me believe that this is likely going to be a delayed title, from my expert opinion. <laughs> okay, got you. Let's see, because yeah, I, that, but back to Titanfall for a second, like 
um, you know, with the people playing like a lot of like, online games like Titanfall, and then there's Star Wars Battlefront. What do you think uh, if there was a Battlefront Two announcement, which I didn't thought was too soon for one, but if there was one, do you think they could have said this time do a story mode? Maybe I think a lot of games are probably going to move to having a story mode kind of attached. You know, Doom just came out, uh, and that had a story mode, and it had the multiplayer as well. Uh, I think a lot of games are going to start trying to just include both elements. It just makes a little bit more sense. True, true. Uh, I I think speaking on the track of um, story modes, like. I thought the story mode element of FIFA 17 was really interesting. I've only played like one FIFA game in 2002, but I thought what what they um, announced that that was interesting to have a story mode or a story a story mode in a a FIFA title. No, I don't play a lot of the sports games, (laughs) but I do appreciate those franchises because they're huge, and I think that. A lot of people feel like when EA starts showing the sports games, oh, it's time for a bathroom break. But, you know, those are really big, huge titles. And for FIFA to include something like a story mode, I think that's a really good move on EA's part. Um, Because FIFA and Madden are pretty much their flagship franchises in a way. Um, Those two titles alone can hold EA. (laughs) You know, they can hold them up because a lot of people play those games despite what gamers think. You know, like, oh, it's time for a bathroom break. Actually, those titles are really huge. So I think it's cool that they're now including a story mode. I love story modes because I'm, I'm a single player. I like playing things by myself a lot. So, yeah, story mode is always going to be a good thing, in my opinion. True. I, I'm just hoping for you know, whatever the unannounced um, Star Wars um, game in the future um um, like that I think they're working on is like it might be a single player story. I'm like I just hope it stands up to um, something like Uncharted. There was a lot of Star Wars at E3 this year. I'm kind of like, is that riding that Force Awakens wave now? Because there was so much Star Wars. If I'm, I think every conference almost had something Star Wars related to show. Right. Yeah. Because I didn't expect that. Um, is it the X Wing VR experience with the PlayStation's one? Yeah. I didn't expect that. Like, okay. Like, now I have two reasons to want to try VR, but we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll but, get there. Yeah. But we got, uh, or did you have anything else you want to say about EA before we move to Bethesda? Um, nothing else, but some more. Uh, you know, EA's conference is always my least liked one, but it was a solid conference. Okay. Just needed more Mass Effect, I think. Yeah, I've. I, I will say, I mean, that will probably be the one game I will get probably the day it comes out. Oh, and I'm I'm replaying two right now just so I can have something to do. Right. And then hopefully I can actually transfer my files from two to three for the first time. There's a story behind that, but I won't get to that right now. But uh, I well I deleted my file by mistake. First time. Oh, when I, when that I, is when amateur I, mistake. <laughs> I, I I thought I was deleting the extra file. It turned out I was deleting the I deleted the one I was playing when I got to the Omega Relay mission. So right. I just went ahead and played three by itself. So anyway, anyway, <laughs> um, but Bethesda. Woo, what were Bethesda. Your, yeah, I I saw on Facebook you had a lot to say about this one, so. What we well, Bethesda is one of my favorite companies. It's like top five. <laughs> okay. So we had uh, Quake Champions, Fallout 4, Skyrim Special Edition, Prey, Doom, and Dishonored 2. So what what, what was your like standout moments from, from this press conference? Well, for me, it was Dishonored 2, just because I love newer IPs and Dishonored the first one was amazing and this one has a not only does it have a female protagonist 
But it has this really cool time mechanics where you can do stealth kills by just stepping in and out of time. I think that was really neat. I really liked the presentation that uh, Bethesda did showing it off. It reminded me of their Fallout 4 presentation last year where they spent like a very lengthy amount of time to their biggest title. So I think that was probably my favorite part of the Bethesda conference. But there was a lot that was really good with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I... I know I haven't played them that many Bethesda games, but I was really happy with the Skyrim um, Special Edition. Right. And I'm still playing it on PS3, but I like the addition of being able to include mods now on like, PS4. Like, I honestly have not played Skyrim because I wanted to play it on PS4 or, you know, this newer generation. I know that's weird to do because who was to say that it was going to get remastered? I kind of just figured that that it would eventually get remastered because it came out so late in the PS3, Xbox 360 life cycle. Mm-hmm. I was like, they're totally going to remake this game in HD for PS4, or Xbox One. So I was really kind of psyched to hear about, you know, the new Skyrim remaster. Did you get a chance to see the Prey trailer? No, I didn't. Okay, you need to, when, we, when we're done with this podcast, you need to definitely check that out. That looks really, really good. It's a reboot to that franchise. Um, yeah. being headed by Arcane Development and taking place in 2033, and it's a first-person game. It looks so good. It was probably the only surprise that Bethesda had at their um, at their conference besides Quake Champions. Everything else we kind of already knew, so Quake Champions and Prey were the two kind of standout surprises. Mm-hmm. And what about the Fallout 4 DLC? I kind of figured that they were going to give us DLC for Fallout 4, like, obviously. Mm-hmm. I knew that was coming in the Doom DLC. Um, the Nuka World looks really cool. I just, I'm a fan of amusement parks, so that looks really, really fun. Yeah, I, I watched the press conference. I just don't remember everything. I think that I watched it and I was tired. It's, it's, yeah, it's so late at night for us because we're on the East Coast. Right. From Going from EA to, to Bethesda, I thought it was a good way to begin the E3 week. Moving on to Monday, we had Microsoft, which um, there's a lot. Gears of War 4, Battlefield 1, wait, wait, wait EA talked about Battlefield 1. I forgot. Yeah, they did, but I think uh, Xbox showed different footage right. from the game. Right, that's right. Because then there's Forza Horizon 3, the core, Final Fantasy 15, which I'm really intrigued by that. Killer Instinct, Inside, We Happy Few, and I'm not going to read the entire list, but uh, I think one that stood out to me was Sea of Thieves. Really? To me. To me. <laughs> out of the entire conference? Well, well no, well, no, no, well, no. I mean, I, 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 I was able to watch it yesterday, and um, I think because, and this is the honest admission on the podcast, I fell asleep because I was tired. But I watched the entire part, the, um, presentation. But just, just in terms of something that I didn't expect to see or something that was like out of the norm, Sea of Thieves kind of stood out to me. D- okay. D- d- just because of the whole, like, I, I like the whole pirate motif in genre. So just to kind of see, okay, you can jump from ship to ship, do whatever you have to do on, on, on board. Like, I thought that was intriguing. I like scale bound. Um, yeah. It reminded me of like Pokemon meets Final Fantasy or something, along with the world ends with you because he puts those headphones on during the fight and suddenly he's all powerful. I don't know. It re- looked really cool. I love fantasy. This seems to combine a lot of elements of games that I like. So I am intrigued. I really think that I'm going to buy an Xbox now. This conference was very solid, and I've been waiting for years for an E3 press conference from Microsoft to want, make me want to buy an Xbox. Um, I think they finally did that, so kudos to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so would you get an Xbox One S? <sighs> Yes, which that is my one criticism of the conference is they bookended it with two different consoles. You know, we we have the right. Xbox One S that's coming out in August. It's going to be is it two ninety nine? Yeah, I think so. Um, and then we have Project Scorpio. Put the quotations around that because I don't know if that's going to be the final name, but that's supposedly coming next holiday season. 
Yeah. It just seems really soon. It seems very soon to have not one but two new consoles. Right, because uh, when they when they start the presentation for that video, I was like, okay, what are y'all doing? And I'm like, oh wait, this is not about the Xbox One S. This is a new console. And I was kind of lost for words. Like, yeah, I was excited. I'm like, didn't we just get? Didn't we just have Xbox <laughs> One come out like a few, right. years, a few years ago? And and then we get to Sony. There's that you know the rumor of the PS4 Neo. Like that's like the equivalent, I guess, of the uh, iPhone 6s Plus or whatever. Yeah, it seems like every year we're gonna have to get new consoles. Now I'm not very happy about that um, because I don't normally get consoles at their launch. Uh, I normally am still playing the the former, you know, console. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and get the Xbox One S. And whenever the new one comes out, I'll just wait a little bit and then upgrade to that. Um, but that was my biggest criticism about Microsoft's conference, I think. Ah, got you. What, you, what, were your, what was your take on Final Fantasy XV? I'm, I'm already really excited about that game. Like, I'm wanted. It gets here this year. Um, people didn't like the demo that they showed during this conference. I think they were being really hard on it. I don't think it's like a reflection of the game. The game comes out September 30th. So this was a live demo. Live demos are always kind of a, a hit or miss thing for conferences. Um, I just love the Final Fantasy franchise, but I haven't been that excited about a Final Fantasy game since 10-2. So I'm ready for this one because it re- looks really good. And we've been waiting on this one for a long time. So mm-hmm. I guess I only have a few more months to wait. That's true. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> hmm. And what about Tekken 7? Oh, that was so awesome when they showed that trailer because I had no idea <laughs> like that they were going to show Tekken 7 because... It starts with Akuma, and it's Akuma and Heihachi, so obviously we're thinking, oh, did they bring back Tekken vs. Street Fighter, which was is canceled, you know, that's a canceled title. Right. But um, they fooled me, but I guess it was a good one fool because I love Tekken. It's, it's probably my favorite, like, 3D fighter franchise, so I'm happy that we're getting that. And I'm also happy that we're, we're getting the Gears of War 4. Yes excited about that too when that comes out this year too so i definitely need to get an xbox now so i guess they really did their job if they were trying to sell more xboxes and what about halo wars 2 see i'm not i'm not good at halo (laughs) i'm not good at it so i can't really speak on it i know everyone's excited because halo is a big franchise but i've just never really been that good at halo I think I've only ever played one or two at a friend's house back on the original Xbox. So I, I yeah. and maybe a PC once, but you know, that's I've all I got. But, I can't be good at everything. <laughs> uh, you can. Yeah. You gotta take your time. But 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 so you were sold on an Xbox One S, so Microsoft did their job, so they're, they're, it was, they're gonna get your it was a solid B, B. It was a B plus, I would say, the conference. Okay. Got you. Let's see. Next we have... Um, well, before, do you have anything else you want to say about Microsoft? Um, mm, let's, well, they do have uh, an indie game coming out. We Happy Few. Very creepy trailer. Um, I'm glad I already oh, knew about yeah. that game prior to the conference because I think I would have been... A little disturbed, but I already knew, so that's good. Um, and then obviously a lot of people are talking about ReCore. Um I liken ReCore to another PlayStation 4 exclusive game that's coming out. I don't wanna make those comparisons, but it looks a little like Horizon Zero Dawn to me. But um a lot of yeah, robots, a yes. lot of female protagonists, so it's kind of like, eh, which one's the better game or whatever. I, I'm holding out for Horizon, like, just because of like, how it, it sold, sold me last year. But I need to go back and look at all these games that were in Microsoft's. Like, I don't remember all of them, but I, I remember seeing We Happy Few, and I was like, I'm, I don't know about this. 
I can't play that, but I will be watching streamers play that. I can't. I know I can't personally touch it, but I will watch people play it. Yeah, and Recore, I'm going to look at that after we record at the finish recording, and I'm going to do my comparison. To, yeah. Okay. Cool. Huh. So next we had Ubisoft. So I know I came into this one right before the Star Trek Bridge Crew. And that sold me for some reason. Probably because I'm a, I'm a Trekkie, but that's probably, <laughs> that's probably why that sold me. But I know like there was South Park and, and South Park, the fractured but whole and yeah. Ghost Recon, Wildlands, and then Dead Space 2017, For Honor. I thought that was interesting, but what, what were your takes, takeaways? So South Park, the fractured butthole is my favorite thing about this conference. Um, obviously, it's a South Park. So if you don't like that kind of crude, crass humor, you're not going to like this game. Um, but Stick of Truth was probably the most funniest thing I've ever played. And the fact that I already liked Star- South Park and it just felt like playing this really extended South Park episode, um, I really, really enjoyed it. So the South Park the Fracture of a Hole is actually going to be playing on the tropes of superheroes. So since superheroes are so big now, I think that it's going to be like amazing because it even made Marvel and DC jokes in the trailer that they showed. So I'm excited. That's probably my favorite um, thing that came out of the conference, and it comes out December the 6th, so I'm excited about that game. And do you have any thoughts about the Division Underground and Survival DLC? So this was the only thing that I kind of predicted was going to come out of the conference. Um, I knew that we were probably going to get a new Division uh, DLC. I knew that was coming because they're going to try to keep that game alive as long as they can. And with so many games now that have that, you know, multiplayer online kind of access, they have to do something to keep it alive. So I kind of figured that DLC was coming for it. Um, And I also predicted that Watch Dogs 2 was coming. But those were the only two titles that I kind of already knew um, were going to be at this conference. Mm -hmm. And, eh, you know... Standard Ubisoft titles, I suppose. Would they be some things that, that you would play if you got a chance to, or would you go get them like the weekend they come out? Or so I'm, I would probably the most get obviously South Park, but also they did Steep. Steep was like really interesting to me because I like seeing like new stuff, not just continued franchises. So Steep was like an action sports game. And you do, like, extreme sports in the snow. And I wouldn't be able to really do that in real life. So I'm really kind of excited to see more about that game. I used to love, like, SSX Tricky and Tony Hawk. So, yeah, that game looks right up my alley as far as, like, action sports. Yeah, I I started, I was able to see up to the beginning of Steep and then I, like, lost my connection. But... I, I thought Steep was going to be something intriguing, and like, you just kind of sold me on that. And now, we move on to Sony, and uh, this intriguing, it's intriguing presentation. I think was it one of the big ones was Spider-Man, which I did not expect that. Um, Arkham VR, Star, uh, Battlefront VR, uh, Farpoint... I'll tell you, well, not, I will not be playing Death Stranding. Um, I was just like saying nope the entire time during during that one. And then there was a, a new God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, Last Guardian information. What were your takeaways from PlayStation? Well, PlayStation just did not stop your entire conference. It was probably the best E3 conference in the history of E3 because it was just so balanced and... They just kept coming with games. They know that we wanted to see games. They didn't really touch on their hardware that much. They did touch on the PlayStation VR because they have a bunch of VR games that are really, really cool coming out. Um, I was very, very excited to see a new God of War. I know there's a little mixed feelings about it because it's kind of like a revisioning of the entire franchise. But it was so cool how they introduced it. Like... I don't know many people that would have the the guts to start their conference with their big, like a really huge reveal like that. 
with an entire orchestra accompanying it. I just thought that was so cool, like, so cool. Um, so I'm excited about God of War. There's so much in this conference that it's really hard to digest it all. There's so much good stuff there. Um, but I'm very excited about God of War. Obviously, it doesn't have a release date right now. It's just in development. I would probably predict it's like a 2018, like late 2018 title, if anything. Um, we'll probably get a release date next E3 for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm excited about God of War. Batman Arkham VR looks awesome. Obviously, I'm a Batman fan, so I want to be Batman. So now I got to buy a VR thing, <laughs> you know, when it comes out. Also, there's the Final Fantasy VR experience. Mm-hmm. I'm not too much of a fan of that because they already have the regular title coming out. And I guess now we're going to see a lot of titles cross over to be, you know, kind of like when you go to the movies and you can either buy a standard ticket or a 3D. I think that's what we're getting now in games. Like you can either buy a standard game or you can buy a VR game. That to me hasn't sold me yet because it's still taking a little bit of time for me to get sold on VR anyway. Right. So... Now it seems like, you know, you pick or choose. You want the regular or do you want the VR? And, and Final Fantasy is the first one that I think we're seeing that with. I think they're also Fallout is going to have VR, um, which I think would be cool because that's first person. But I think Final Fantasy is third person. So I don't know how they're going to really integrate that. Kind of interesting, but I don't know if it's my thing yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too sold on it yet. I'm just like... You know, as much as I would like to try VR, I'm just more concerned with, like, how well it does work at home, you know, versus, like, being, like, a Dave and Buster's or something. Then there's Horizon Zero Dawn. Like, I was sold on that last year. I don't... I was happy to see more, like, get to see more of the menu set up this time around. I've been following that game since it's actually, um... was announced at E3 last year. Then at PlayStation Experience back in December... They gave us like this 20 minute long gameplay. Then last week they gave us the story trailer and the fact that it's going to have a collectors and unfortunately announced that this game has been delayed until next year. Um, It was originally supposed to come out this year, but we're going to be getting it on. I can't remember the exact date, but I think it's in February. Okay. So that's a bummer. I really wanted it this year, but it, it's just an amazing game. Like I said earlier, I love I, new IPs. I love love when it's something fresh, and this just is the freshest that we can get, I think, out of anything that came out at E3 uh, this year. So it's beautiful, and, I'm, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. Yeah, you know, I, I don't do such a great job with like the open world games like that, but that's something I really want to try. And I think when like, that, when Skyrim comes, you know, the re-release of Skyrim, I probably can try my adventure over and do it a much better, do a much better job. But also, I, I'm really interested in Spider-Man. I didn't expect that. Right, I didn't expect that either. That was so awesome. Because when that came on, I was like, "Wait, this isn't for the movie, is it? No. Oh, it's oh, it's different. Okay, and." I don't know the last time I was excited for a Spider-Man game. I mean, I loved Spider-Man. What was the one where you can go into, like, the different uh, time periods? Uh, I know what you're talking about. I, I, was that, like, the Spider-Man, like, two... I, I think I was it was, Sp- was it Spider-Man Dimensions. The Dimensions, that's right. Dimensions. Yes, I love that game. Like, I love it so... Oh, actually, it was Shattered Dimensions. Oh, Shattered Dimensions, okay. Yeah, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. That came out back in, like, 2010, it was brilliant. It's such a good game. So I'm very excited about this new Spider-Man. And plus Insomniac Games is, is doing it. I love Insomniac. They do such great games. So that trailer was really cool. I think it's it's also timed very well because, you know, Spider-Man Homecoming comes out next year. So for Sony to pull that out, that's really smart. Now, is that Tom Holland's voice or is that, is that somebody completely different? Not sure. It would be interesting if it was that they're, but it's not a movie tie-in. So this okay. isn't going to tie in exactly with the movie. But who's to say it's not going to be like an expansion, you know, of the movie sort of. Um, right. Either or, I love Spider Man. It's one of my favorite Marvel uh, characters. So I'm excited, especially with Insomniac Games being the ones behind this. Mm-hmm. 
And what was the information about the last Guardian? So we got a release date finally <laughs> after like a billion years. I think this has been the game that's been at the most E3s ever. <laughs> which I'm excited for because everyone's been waiting to hear, you know, more about this game because every year it's there, every year they're like, it's coming. And we finally got the release date of October the 25th of this year. If they were to not stick to that, I think a lot of people would probably be a little bit upset, but um, I'm excited. So they gave us a trailer and they gave us the release date. Um, this has been shown for several years i think since 2009 almost it's just been it's just been a long time coming so the fact that we actually have a release date means that we actually know this game is coming and apparently people that were at e3 got a chance to play like 30 minutes of the game so it's it's an actual thing so i'm excited it's it should be really good okay and it should probably be very, it's probably going to be very difficult, let's be honest. Yeah. I I, I remember watching the, the trailer last year and just seeing what they had the characters doing. I was like, yeah, this is going to be a, a a puzzle, not not just outside like the obvious puzzle. Like, this is going to be a puzzle for your brain. I'm like, what do I have to do? So. Right. But it's, you know, Shadow of Colossus and um, what was the other title? Eco, I think. Yeah, yeah. Those are not easy games. So I don't really expect for this to be easy at all. It's probably going to have a ton of really hard, difficult puzzles. But I'm going to try it. I would love to hear your thoughts on that one when you get it. Then there's the game I have not talked about for a reason. Resident Evil 7. I won't play that. Can't play it. No. Not in VR especially. But it's another one of those things that I think you can play in VR or not. But that trailer, oh my gosh. <laughs> I I think I I think I texted you when that one started, I just said nope. I know. It was just <laughs> like, whoa now. And they actually the demo's out already. Um and I watched the demo be played and I was just like, nope, nope. I'm I'm not very good at horror horror uh anything, like anything at all. Uh but Resident Evil 2, I was watching my brother play that when we were kids, and there was a scene in that game where the dogs jump out, and I just was done for the rest of my life. So <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be touching Resident Evil 7 myself. I will probably watch people streaming and stuff, um, but that was probably the uh, creepiest trailer I've ever seen in my life. And then in the same press conference, we had Death Stranding, which was like, the, the weirdest trailer I've ever seen in my life. I don't know. I, I Tony think, was pulling out all of the punches. They were just like, we're going to just do everything. I, I think when, when Death Stranding came on, I was like, first I was like, this looks interesting. No. Especially when he kept going up up and up up into the ceiling and the rafters and they kept coming and coming and coming. I was like, I'm sorry. You know, I can't play this. So I think you're talking about uh, the zombie game, which was uh, Days Gone. Oh, wait. Oh, I thought that was Death Stranding. Oh. No, Death Stranding is Kojima's new title. Oh, I was thinking of Days Gone. Okay, sorry. Okay. No, Days Gone, yeah, no. That's like (laughs) a massive amount of zombies, which I think people are like, are we tired of zombies? Because every, again, just like Star Wars, every conference seems to have some kind of zombie type of game. Right, that's right. Death Stranding was the Norman Reedus game with um, Kojima, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm really interested to know what that is going to be. I, I, I know it was like we didn't get a lot on it, but it, but that's enough to kind of wait, wait your appetite. Of like, I, I, I want to know more next year. Right. I think maybe he'll probably, uh, you know, he just walked on stage and everyone went crazy and then he was like, I'm back. I think this is just Kojima like giving a giant middle finger to Konami. <laughs> and he's done mm-hmm. created his new studio. Now he has a title game that still has no readers. It looks very interesting, intriguing, but weird. Um I'll play it because it's Kojima. I think he deserves everything. He just deserves everything. So Right, because I I saw like like there was like the uh, I watched a little bit of the podcast beyond live stream afterwards and they said something about like the fact that he had like five things on a necklace, on a character's necklace is like maybe like a reference saying like yeah these are, like the five things from my past. Okay, oh that's 
That's an interesting perspective. Right. Is Crash Bandicoot remastered? Are you excited for that one? I am, because Crash Bandicoot is, like, a major part of my childhood. It's just as important as Mario to me, because um, for the longest time, my parents were the ones that brought my games. I didn't play a mature-rated game until I played Gears of War when I was a senior in high school. So Crash Bandicoot, Mario, those were pretty much what they brought me. So um, I had an N64, but I asked my parents to get me a PlayStation instead, and they got me a PlayStation and they got me Crash Bandicoot. So I was really excited to kind of see more Crash because it's been so long since Crash has even been a thing. Um... I think this is probably more so for us older gamers. I don't know if any, like, they're trying to bring on any new gamers or, like, kids with bringing Crash Bandicoot back. But I absolutely love Crash, so I can't wait to get my hands on the remastered version. I didn't miss something. I've never played a Crash Bandicoot game in my life. What? Did you have a PlayStation when you were a kid? No, I was Nintendo. Yeah. See, I switched, and then I started being able to have both. I was a very spoiled child. Right. So <laughs> yeah. I mean like like I, I think I went to like, some friend's house that had a game and I may like try it or then when Circuit City had demos, I would try something, but I never actually played one. So this may be my way of getting into the lore. I mean, I didn't have a memory card, so I can remember just trying to get as far as I could. So I don't even really know if I've ever beaten Crash because if you don't have a memory card when you're a kid, you kinda just do these six, eight-hour spurts of playing a game, and then you have to turn your game off at the end of the day, and then you have to just restart it right. the next day. <laughs> yeah, those were days. didn't believe in memory cards. They were just like, we already brought you a console, a game, anything extra, we'll buy you a controller so you can play with your sister or brother, but other than that, we're not buying no extra stuff. Oh, no. So, oh, no. I'm just... Well, I'm just glad to be able to finally be able to save my game. <laughs> that is making me think of like the one PS1 game. I think I, one of the few I had was like a Yu-Gi-Oh game, and you have to save that game. It's too it's, it's stupid hard. Well, Shinmu, I know we're going completely off topic. But oh, that's, yeah, that was Dreamcast, but Shinmu was another game that I had that I didn't have memory card to. And there was no way. You just had to, every day I would just restart it because I didn't have memory card. But it's so impossible. <laughs> oh, gosh. That, uh, we could like, sit here all night and talk about games that need memory cards, and kids and they will not understand. Right. But, um, I think it's one other game. I mean, there's, a, there's a lot I could point out from um, E3 and different press conferences. But in, in terms of Sony, Detroit Becomes Human. I feel like that's that going to be like, a, like the next Heavy Rain type title. Well, a lot of people were kind of saying that it reminded them of um, uh, what, what's that new game that came out this year, Quantum Break, I want to say. Yeah. Which was a like, Microsoft exclusive title. Um, and this looks like kind of similar to that, kind of like Heavy Rain, you know, where you do the choices. It looks like a melding of those things. Mm-hmm. I just saw it as a really cool looking new IP. So I, I will check that out. Maybe I'm not really too into this game. Well, it's done by Quantic Dream. So those are the people that have did Heavy Rain. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. And Beyond Two Souls. So it's probably, it's from that company. So I'm pretty sure they're just continuing on with those two titles that I named. Um, I didn't know it was by them. That's really interesting. I didn't know either. Cause I, I was watching it, and at first I wasn't sure what I was looking at, and I, I kind of realized eventually, like, oh, I see. These are your choices. Because they kept yeah, playing so that scene over and over, and I was like, wait, what's going on? And it clicked. So, yeah, that's really interesting, because I love love Beyond Two Souls. That was very, very good. Heavy Rain was a little bit before my time. I didn't have a console when it came out. But um, Beyond Two Souls is, is really a game. So to know that this game, Detroit Become Human, is by the developer Quantic Dream, that's really interesting. So that even makes me more intrigued of the game. Mm-hmm. And our next one, although I don't see them on the list, was Nintendo. Nintendo. <laughs> and I, the only thing I know that came out of it was Zelda. And I'm like, I know Zelda and Pokemon. That's why there, that's why there is no list. <laughs> okay. That, ex- that explains a lot. Then. Okay. <laughs> well, I didn't actually watch the conference or did, was it a conference or was it just like their digital um, uh, event or thing something. that they normally do? Probably a digital event. Although I did see that it was on the E3 
Facebook page, they had it listed as a press conference, like, but I, it, it's something that was supposed to be like at 12 our time. But that, yeah, I'm thinking it was probably just like their um, digital thing that they've been doing for a few years because Nintendo has completely kind of taken a different step towards E3. And I don't know if we want to get into the conversation of where E3 is going as an event, but Nintendo is, is one of the forefront of pushing that progression. Um, but yeah, the two titles that came out of that were The Legend of Zelda Birth of the Wild, and they talked a lot about Pokemon Sun and Moon, which comes out this year. Um, yeah, I'm, excited. I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, they, they stuck to their two big franchises, so... Um, a lot of people were concerned going into E3 as to whether just the new Legend of Zelda game could carry Nintendo. Um, I don't know why we were questioning that. Of course, the new Legend of Zelda game can carry Nintendo. Um, Nintendo is one of the few development, also publishing companies out there that can pretty much give you the same franchises for the last like 20, 30 years and people still buy them. Mm hmm. I think I have just about every, like, you know, big Pokemon game, except for, like, White 2. I didn't, I didn't get that, or Black 2. I didn't get either one of those. Yeah, I have played every new Pokemon since I was a child. <laughs> 20 yeah. years of Pokemon, and I'm 28, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I have been playing every one of them. Yeah, I, I think Pokemon was the only reason I actually was like, I have to get a 3DS now. I think I'm going to probably get Pokemon Moon, just because, like, the... The Pokemon on the cover looks looks interesting. I'm getting a uh, Sun, which is different for me because I normally get the cool color games like the blues and the greens. Um, but I'm getting Sun this time. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna battle. That's what we're saying. Okay. Good. I mean, I need somebody who's getting the other one so I, we can trade Pokemon. Also. Um. Did you get a chance to see the Birth of the Wild? I saw it this, early this morning and. I need to go back and watch it again, but I liked it. I'm intrigued. Um, Legend of Zelda is probably really, like, my second favorite franchise out there, but I always feel like I get really hype about the games, and then they come, and then I'm a little bit disappointed. But this is going to be open world, so that's really interesting and cool. Um, I, I'm going to play it, obviously. It's Legend of Zelda, but... I'm very excited about it, so can't wait to get that. I, here's another admission. I've never beat a Zelda guy. Never beaten any? No. Okay. I, I, know, I, I, know you're, I know you're questioning this friendship, right? Yeah, you're. Well, I haven't been able to even play A Link Between Worlds. Um, I really want to play that. Uh, and I haven't played Skyward Sword because I was a little bit put off by it but you know i have beaten them <laughs> maybe you should try a uh, phantom hourglass and spirit tracks those are really fun not too difficult i i recommend those okay i i will look into those i i, I know i want i know i want to play spirit tracks for reasons and it's because it sounds it seems fun yeah they're really fun Okay. They're not that. They're not stressful like things like Twilight Princess and Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. <laughs> I, I, I think it. I'm gonna wrap th things up after I tell this quick Zelda story. Like I think my first Zelda was um, Ocarina of Time, and I did not understand they were canceling the game, playing it on 64. Like I made it to the third day, and I got I I, I got scared. I was like, I quit playing. Oh really? That that was like the kid me playing. I didn't understand it. Yeah, my favorite was Legend um, of Zelda Two. That was a very difficult game. I still actually own it. But um, back when they were doing cartridges, they used to make the games gold. Oh yes, that was so awesome. pretty. I still have mine. Awesome. awesome. Uh, yeah, nerd alert. I, yeah, I still have my gold cartridge. <laughs> I still have my gold Ocarina of Time cartridge too, and then when, I think I, I I got Twilight Princess on the Wii, and got to the first dungeon and got stuck. It's it's not a, it's a difficult game, but I love it. I just love Legend of Zelda. I hope the Birth of the Wild lives up to all of my open world Zelda fantasies. <laughs> I can't wait to get it. I'm just glad that we finally have a, a little bit more information about it. Same here. So, do you think? Um, I know I need to watch it again and look more into the information behind it, but 
do you think with the announcement of the NX coming, is it next year, that, um, do you think that's going to be enough to, to sustain people's interest in a new Nintendo console? So, I am a weird person when it comes to consoles. I know that companies are, you know, especially the big three, Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony, they put out their consoles and there's all this talk about numbers and trying to keep up with each other. I've always thought Nintendo was very innovative in their consoles while while Sony and um, Microsoft just kind of stuck to making powerful systems. But I think that it'll sustain them. I'm not really that big of a person that's like, oh, a new console, I need to jump on this. You know, that's not really my thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm always fine with keeping my console as long as it's working, you know? Um, And as long as there are features that I don't need to have to have a good experience on these newer consoles. So whenever Nintendo drops this NX, since life cycles of consoles are so short now, um, I don't know if I'll probably purchase it. Yeah, because I like like I got the Wii U rather late, and now I'm just like, was that a good idea? Well, see that I don't like that we as gamers have to feel that way. Um, I don't like that we have to sit just like you said earlier. You know whether you should wait to get a PS4 now or until you know a new their new one whenever that may be because we don't even know comes out. I don't like that we have to think about things like that. That makes me so mad. Um, because back when we were back in our old days, you know, we would have our consoles for almost our entire childhood before we have to even consider getting something else or our parents. And right. now it's like, oh, gamers now are adults. Let's push out consoles every three years. Um, it's it's just not my cup of tea because uh, I love my consoles. I still have my PS3 even when I got my PS4. Um, I, I have a Wii U. I didn't get a new Xbox because I wasn't interested, but now I think I want one. Mm-hmm. But now, you know, it's, I'm questioning, like, do I get the, do I get the S or do I wait for this new one? I don't like having to have that kind of struggle. Yeah. Cause, and, and that's the one thing about the industry. Like when I look at, you know, like, I listen to like the IGN podcast, looks like the Nintendo and Sony one. And they, like, like when a new console comes out, one of their first conversations is like, okay, now the PS4 is out. Cool. And now let's talk about PS5. I'm like, it just came <laughs> out. Like, it just came out. And then, but I have to remember, you know, with them being in the industry, their focus is on what's next, not what's current. Which is kind of like, I think of a backwards thing of like, we're excited for the new thing, new thing comes, and then like, well, what's next? Yeah, it's always it's almost like you have to kind of think a whole bunch of steps ahead in order to decide like when to purchase your console. If you're not somebody that's you know privileged enough to get everything new, which I am not one of those people. Like when I think when I was considering buying my PS4, actually no, it was my PS3. When I was considering buying my PS3, I actually did research to see when the PS4 was coming out. At that time, it was still kind of a few years off. So I went ahead and got my PS3. Um, I'm, I'm on, um, I'm one of the people that's like, just get it, you know, don't wait because who's to say, uh, what's going to happen. So you might as well just get the console that's out at that time that you want it. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. I mean, I think in in terms of like my interest in PS4, there are enough games out now where I think, okay, I could see myself getting one now. But there's still not enough to where I feel like it's enough for me to justify four hundred whatever dollars, however much it costs now. But E three twenty sixteen, were you overall impressed? I was impressed with it. Um, it was one of the better E threes, I think. But it still had, I don't know if it's like a very m- memorable E three, um, or if it'll have any of like the memorable moments that past E3s may have. I think that the whole God of War thing was probably the most memorable thing. Also, the South Park Stick of Truth presentation was very memorable. But other than that, it was just kind of basic for me. Um, A lot of exciting things came out of it, and I think that a lot of the exciting things are things that we're actually seeing this year. It kind of is so different from past E3. It's like this one just seems tra- like a transitional period for the for the show, for the industry, 
just everything. Um, it's just really interesting, I think. Mm-hmm. I got you. And I remember you've gone to E3 before, right? Yes, I went in 2011. I'm long overdue. I'm going to try to go next year. Okay. So, as someone who's gone, like, um, and I guess, like, some final thoughts and things for our listeners, um, what is it like going there, like, you know, versus, you know, you know when, when they reveal the next big thing in, pers- in person versus watching it on, on the stream? Like, is there a difference in the feel and, like, being in a room in the communal experience? Well, I honestly feel like the people that sit at home um, know more about E3 news than the people that be at E3. Like, unless you are press and it's your job to kind of cover everything, you don't know everything that comes out of the show. Um, Unless you're spending your entire day kind of sitting in the press conferences, which not everyone does. Some people just pick and choose. Some people only get invited to one or some people get invited to all. You know, you people at home actually know more about E3 news than the people that attend. At least, and that's how I thought about my experience. I felt like when I got home from E3, that's when I found out stuff that everyone else had known about that I was like, how did I miss that, you know? Um, So I honestly feel like the people at home have a better experience sometimes uh, than the people that are sitting in that audience. I got you. But I do believe that, like I said earlier, I think this was kind of a transitional year for the show from how it was done in the past to how it's going to be moving forward in the future. You know, with Nintendo focusing on just a few titles and there was a lot of public events. There was E3 Live, which was like a public event. I honestly do believe that the show is going to open up more towards the public. I mean, we're getting all of the conferences streamed now. That was something that before you wouldn't really get. Uh, people at home didn't get that. They had to just kind of wait for people that did go to E3 to report back. But I do believe that it is moving and changing now. And I'm intrigued to see where it goes. Mm-hmm. That, I think, you know, like when G4 was still around, like that was the only way I got any news from E3. Like if they, if they happened to show a press conference on TV. And that was a rare thing. Well, I can take it even far back when you had to wait for, like, the gaming magazines to come out. And that's how you got your E3 news. Like, when I was, you know, in high school and stuff, I had to wait for, like, Electronic Gaming Weekly and Nintendo Power and and stuff like that to come out. And that's how you got your news. Um, So now that it's so right here at our fingertips is really cool. But I still would, you know, love to go to the show again and just kind of experience it again. It's, it's really, really great. If anybody ever has an opportunity to go, I think they should just go take it. Got you. Uh, you have a vast knowledge of um, gaming history and um, just a lot of things. So how can people find you online if they want to like, talk to you about these things? So they can find me on my website, which is butterflysamurai.com. And I'm also really active on Twitter it's also Butterfly Samurai, but with one T. So B U T E R F L Y Samurai. Okay. So any more any, any final thoughts about E3 or before we release you to the inter- interwebs? Um, I really love E3 and I really love gaming, and this is probably the most exciting part of the year. So thank you, and everybody, please follow Butterfly Samurai on her social network. Yeah, thank you for having me. Mm-hmm.